Thank you for watching this video. In just a few seconds, I'm going to list the trout species of North America along with their range and simple identification, and hopefully you learn something new. Now if you dig deep into researching species of trout, things can become really complicated as there are numerous species and dozens of subspecies. I mean, just cutthroat alone have 14 subspecies. There is also a close overlap with salmon, char, and trout, which continues to complicate things. I won't be going deep into the subspecies, but instead focus more on the species hybrids that we know as trout in North America. This will also include some of the char species that we often call trout. The species will be separated and listed in the following order. First, the trout species, second, the char species, and third, the hybrids. Let's begin with the lesser known Apache trout and Gila trout. Now I decided to talk about both of these species together because they have a very similar story and a very similar range. Unless you're from Arizona or New Mexico, it's likely that you have never heard of either of these. Both species have a very small range, and even within their native range, Gila's and Apache's are super rare. Gila trout only live in the tributaries of the Gila River, and Apache trout are limited to the upper Little Colorado and Salt Rivers, and a few lakes where they have been introduced more recently. Both species were among the first in the U.S. to officially become endangered, and the Apache trout is now critically endangered, which is one step from going extinct. Both species are very small, typically just growing to be under a foot long. They both have golden yellow bodies and dark spots along their sides. The easiest way to tell them apart is that the Apache trout have spots on either side of their pupil. Also in general, Gila's tend to have smaller spots than Apache's do. Like I mentioned earlier, cutthroat trout have 14 subspecies. Each of these subspecies has slight variations from one another and different geographical ranges. They get the name cutthroat from the red line below their lower jaw, and this is often what anglers use to identify a cutthroat trout. As seen on the map, most cutthroat trout live in the western half of the US. Rainbow trout are probably North America's most recognized trout. They get their name from the pink stripe that runs along their side. Rainbow trout are native to the Pacific coast from Alaska all the way down to Mexico. They have been introduced far beyond this native range though. Steelhead are also technically rainbow trout. The difference between these forms of the species is that steelhead is anadromous, meaning that it migrates to the ocean and returns to freshwater tributaries to spawn, whereas normal rainbow trout never leave freshwater. This map does not include the expanse of the steelhead trout. Golden trout is the small, beautiful, and rare species that has a tiny native range in California. It has now been introduced to multiple areas of the United States, mainly in the western United States, but also Lake Huron. Brown trout are not native to North America. They were brought in from Germany and a healthy population was then established in the Americas. Despite their name, brown trout aren't always brown. They can be golden or silver, depending on where they live. Brown trout are often found in rivers, which makes them a very fun fish to target. Now we're going to discuss the char species, and this is where things start to get complicated. There are several species of trout in North America which actually aren't trout at all. They're char, a northern cousin of trout and salmon. Brook trout is one of the better known species of char. These guys are much smaller than other char species. As far as looks go, this is one of my personal favorites. It's hard to find a freshwater fish that's prettier than a brook trout. Brook trout are native to the east of North America. Today you can find brook trout basically anywhere that's cold enough. Mountain streams throughout the Rockies and across southern provinces of Canada. Lake trout are the biggest of the char family. This fish is well known for its trophy size. Lake trout also have a much more deeply forked tail than the other species. They are native to most of Alaska and Canada, as well as the Great Lakes and the northeastern U.S. Bull trout are typically very rare. They only live in large, cold rivers and drainages in the Pacific Northwest, and you're unlikely to see a bull trout unless you really go looking for them. The best places to find one are Washington, Oregon, British Columbia, and Alberta. Also members of the char family, Dolly Varden are one of the most northerly fish on this list. Dolly Varden are also anadromous. You can find them in the far northwestern corner of Washington, as well as much of Alaska and Canada.
There are very many types of hybrids or crosses between two species in the Salmonid family. This occurs both naturally and artificially. I'm just going to go over the most common species of hybrids. First we have tiger trout. A tiger trout comes from crossing a male brook trout with a female brown trout, but they really don't look much like either parent, or any other trout for that matter. They have a beautiful leopard pattern across most of their body. Tiger trout rarely occur in the wild. You can find them in certain places, but your best bet of actually catching one would be to go to a stocked lake. Splake is another common hybrid species. Splake is a crossbreed between a male brook trout and a female lake trout. Theoretically, they can reproduce in the wild, but this has only happened a few times on record. The vast majority of splake are deliberately bred and stocked. There was a lot to cover on this subject, and I did my best to cover the basics. If you have found that you have an interest in trout, I encourage you to research and discover more about these amazing species on your own. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. As a new channel, anything that you can do to support me is incredibly helpful. Thanks, and we'll see you on the next one.